So we just got some formulas for computing derivatives. So I'll just summarize the second one. So this two right here means apply the operator twice. So this means d dx d dx. So take the second derivative with respect to x of y, and now write the one on the right side down. So I'm going to write it as y double prime of t, meaning it's the second derivative with respect to t. So whenever you see prime notation, you usually want to include the input variable, so you know it's a double prime with respect to the input variable. And then the denominator is single derivative with respect to t, the input variable. So we're going to write it out like that. And then our previous up there. I'll write, <coughs> I'll summarize the other one down here. So our first example, our parametric curve, we're going to find a tangent. x equals secant t, y equals tan t. Now I also need to write the interval t is going to live inside of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. equation of tangent line at <laughs> square root 2, 1. All right, so what do I need to find a tangent line or a line in general? Two pieces of information I need to write down equation of a line. I need either two points or a slope and a point. And of course, if I have two points, I would uh, compute the slope off of that. So what information do I already have? I got a point. So we got one point. So I need to get a slope. Of course, how do we find the slope? Derivative. Alright, easy part. Find a y prime of t and x prime of t. They're just regular trig derivatives. You should have these memorized by now, derivatives of secant and tangent. Did I simplify, find derivatives and simplify correctly? Yes, yes it is, and yes I did. So that was, so that cosine um, was, is the reciprocal of secant. So I multiplied by the reciprocal of secant, which is cosine. Or you could, this is really, this one over secant t, which is cosine. Isn't the x prime the derivative of secant? Oh, did I s mess up the order? <laughs> oh no. So I swapped x and y. That's, yeah, that's what I was wondering, because I thought there was the 
就是这个我爱的这个事情。<笑><笑>哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈
So any questions on that equation? Doesn't matter which form, you can do slope intercept or point slope. I recommend do point slope unless you're given a y-intercept. Because <clears throat> if I ask you to graph it, there's the, oops. If I ask you to graph it, you already see the point and then the slope and the point's already on the curve. So you don't have to try to make your graphs, your lines super accurate. You're graphing based on the point that's already on the curve. All right, next up, we're gonna look at area. So this was slope. So there's a shape called an asteroid. And the parametric equations are cos cubed t sine cubed t. Our t is going to go 0 to 2 pi. Let's do a really rough sketch of this. There are four points that are easy to graph. What are good t values to graph? There's four super nice t values. One of them is zero. What do I get if I plug in zero for t? One, zero. One, zero. What's the next easiest t value to plug in? Pi over two. Pi over two, I like it. What does pi over two give me? Zero, one. Zero, one. What's the next easiest? Pi, and pi we get negative one, zero, and then three pi over two, we're at the bottom. Now this is not just cos sine, so it's not gonna form a circle. What this will form is a shape that looks like this. And the shape's called a diamond. Those aren't the nicest curves. All right, area of the asteroid. You can absolutely use symmetry if you want here. There is two-way symmetry. You can do a quarter of the area multiplied by four, half the area multiplied by two. Let's think about how we would normally get area. How would you get area if this is a function of x? Integrate, so anti-differentiate. And then pick your endpoints and go for that. So let's write down the area in the good old days. So I'll put this in the cloud right here, somewhere in your memory. You should remember that. And it's pretty much the first thing we use integration for is getting areas. And it'll look just like that. All right, we don't have a function of x, however. So let's think about some ways to rewrite this. What's another name for f of x? Y. y, very good. One thing we usually leave off of the area, or the integrals in general, are the, we know that the beginning and ending coordinates are x's. So I'm gonna write this as x zero to x one. What are my beginning x coordinate well, I guess it depends on which way we go here. Let's orient the curve, this is important. So if we orient the curve, it's gonna have this uh, counterclockwise orientation to it. Now if you orient your curve the wrong way, how do you think that's gonna affect your answer? Make it negative. So if you chose the wrong one, you'll get some negative area and you'll know that that means you went the wrong way around and you just make it positive. So I'm not gonna worry too much about orientation now because we're only gonna do one at a time and it will be, if you get negative, it should be positive. Now if I wanted to add up 14 different areas and I just looked at the sum of them and two, four of them were negative and the rest were positive, I might not know if that, that sum might look positive even though some of them individually might be negative. So let's go ahead and make some substitutions. I already know why. Why is sine cubed t? 
So y is sine cube t. Let's substitute that in. So I know y. Now let's think about dx. How can we deal with dx? So we knew that y was sine cube t. That was easy. All right, dx, well. This is d of x is cos cubed. You have made these computations before. You just didn't really see it written like this. I'm going to take the derivative, or d, of cos cubed t. So it's 3 cos squared t times negative sine t. And at the end, there'll be not a dx, there'll be a dt. So you did this when you made a u substitution. You computed what um, dx turned into. So you had x equals some function of u, and then dx is basically the derivative of u. All right, so that is dx right there. u might be more familiar with the form uh, if you divide by dt. That should look really familiar. If you start with, given our starting function was x equals, oh no, that should be a cos squared t. So if x is cos cubed t, dx dt is right above it. So we're used to going this direction. That should be pretty clear right there. If you start on the bottom, given that x is cos cubed t, you go up here. The t derivative is that right there. All we're doing now is treating the differential uh, like a fraction. So <coughs> dt was on the right side, now I moved it over. All right, this substitution, this dx, I'm going to make that substitution in here. Of course, I need way more space now, so I'll slide this over. So we got sine cubed t times 3 cos squared t times negative sine t dt. So what type of values do you think I need for my beginning and ending limits on my integral? t. It's pretty clear I need t values. We're going to change these to t's. Now, we need to make a decision here. Do we want to quadruple the first quadrant area? If we did so, let's write some t values. I think I said them when I, wrote th when I was writing them, but we didn't actually. When I drew the curves, I said the t values, but we didn't write them. One more detail about this area here. <clears throat> this measures the area between f and the x-axis. That's an important thing to remember. So it's going to measure the area between the function and the x-axis. So if we go 0 to pi over 2 for our t-values, it'll measure the area between the function, or the curve, and the x-axis. So if I go 0 to pi over 2, I will get that area right there. If I go pi over 2 to pi, I will find this area. And if I go pi to 3 pi over 2, I'll get this area. And if I go 3 pi over 2 back to 2 pi, I'll get that last area. So if I go 0 to 2 pi, I'll have the full area right there. So I can either go 0 to 2 pi, or I could do any of these smaller ones and either double or quadruple the area. Doesn't matter. I'll, let's just go all the way around 0 to 2 pi. So we have sine to the four or 3 
sine to the fourth t cos squared t dt. Is that negative if you brought it out from the negative sine t? Correct. And my t in the middle looks a lot like a plus. Make sure your t doesn't look like a plus. So this is the area right here. How would you integrate this? You did problems just like this. You definitely take three out. How do we deal with this powers and trig functions? Oh, uh, ah, I forgot the rule. There was a whole chapter, a whole section on it. It wasn't trig sub, it was. No. Nope. So these are both even. You're lucky when one of the two or both are odd. These are both even, so we're going to have to do the power reduction to knock them down a power. And this problem right here would actually take quite a few steps to uh, find. I think they call this case three from yeah, 8.2. Is that right? Oh, look at that. Oh, 8.2. Case three from 8.2. All right, so that should be on your cheat sheet. Now this quarter, I'm not gonna have you integrate so many things. So last quarter, this is part of what I taught you, was integrate this. This quarter, setting it up, is going to be what I test you on. So you can ask Wolfram to solve this for you. I do expect you to know how to do these, but I won't have you integrate that many functions on quizzes and exams. Uh, the ones I ask you to integrate will be a little bit easier than this. <laughs> this one takes quite a few steps right here. <coughs> All right, that's area right there. So here is our area formulas. You can either do, uh, you can either go y dx or x dy, which corresponds to integrating across the x-axis or across the y-axis. That's the only area problem I'm going to do in parametrics. They all are basically the same thing. You have to convert to functions of t. Basically, you either go x dy or y dx, up to you. And either way, you're going to have t values at the top and bottom. And the other way, you have t values at the top and bottom. Now, I will talk about orientation for a tiny bit more. So here is the positive orientation. So if you have some area right here, positive orientation goes counterclockwise. And negative orientation well, which way is that going to go? Clockwise, Oop, that's not, that would not be a good curve to integrate across because it has a, it's a place where it's not smooth right there. <laughs> there we go. So regular clock, clockwise looks like that, yeah. So if you're wondering why it's negative, it's most likely because you went uh, the wrong way, which would be clockwise around. So the positive orientation will be counterclockwise. So when we're thinking of curves, the next thing we'll look at is arc length.
So when we computed arc length, we took a curve and we subdivided it into little tiny line segments. So this is just one of those line segments right here. It'll be the kth line segment, and it was square root of, one way to write it was delta xk squared plus delta yk squared. Another way to write it, x prime squared plus y prime squared square root. Are those a's or deltas? Deltas. Is this <laughs> yeah, so if you want to know how does this relate back to what is on your cheat sheet or what may be on your cheat sheet, So this is the one you're more familiar with. If I distribute dx into our integral here, I'm going to write f prime as dy over dx. That's another way to write f prime. Now when I distribute dx in, it goes in as dx squared. And again, you're treating dx like it is a uh, uh, algebra. You're treating it algebraically. So I'm going to multiply, or in this case, cancel dx squared with dx squared right here. So they cancel out, and we got dx squared plus dy squared. So this is that form on the bottom is the one we're going to be using. So I distributed dx. Oh, it's so basically, it gets square root and squared, and then I distribute to both of the terms. All right, so let's go ahead and so let's think about x and y as functions of t now. So x prime will be dx over dt squared plus y prime is dy over dt squared. mistake on that. I'm actually not going to use that second line. So what I'm going to do instead is multiply by dt over dt, which is multiplying by 1. Now I'm going to leave the numerator dt outside, and I'm going to distribute the 1 over dt into the square root. So it's going to come in as 1 over dt squared when I multiply it into the square root. So it'll be 1 over dt squared inside the square root times dx squared I don't want to over parenthesize. dx and dy are actually one unit, meaning you don't need to wrap them in parentheses. So it's not d times x, it's dx is one unit right there. So I don't have to over parenthesize like that. And then distributing dt squared across, 
we have dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared with a dt outside. And now we can write it as x prime t squared plus y prime t squared dt. And then we just integrate this for the t values and we'll have our arc length. So integrate from A to B. X prime squared plus Y prime squared dt. So there's our arc length formula in parameterized form. So our example is find the perimeter of the asteroid. So you can do this right now. It should be pretty straightforward. Take the x derivative, the y derivative, square them, add them together, square root, put a dt at the ends. So this should be a pretty straightforward computation. Questions on the setup. Now I will need to square these if I want to get the actual the actual uh, computation, the, the number out of this. Let's clean this up a little bit. So square three, you get nine. All right, I'm going to do a ridiculous amount of simplifying really quickly. I saw what was going to be in common when I squared the two, and I went ahead and squared them and factored at the same time. 
So I saw they're both going to have a 3 squared, so I factored a 9 out. They're both going to have a cos squared and a sine squared, but the first term gets an extra cos squared, and the second term gets an extra sine squared. So I would get, I think the first term would be a 9 cos to the fourth sine squared, and the second term would be 9 sine to the fourth cos squared. And then, of course, cos squared plus sine squared, what is that? 1. I guess I could have simplified that out at the same time without writing it, but I wanted to be reasonable with how many steps I was skipping. How in the world do you deal with absolute values? This goes way back, I think, to Calc 1. I'm not sure we did too many absolute values in Calc 2. Absolute value integrals, or absolute values in general, doing calculus and absolute values. So we're going to split it up using a step function. So absolute value is either cosine times sine or negative cosine times sine, depending on if it was positive or negative. So you deal with this by splitting it up as a step function. And it should split up right at uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, depending on if that product's positive or negative. So here's a great time to use symmetry. 0 to pi over 2. So I'll take a quarter of the perimeter, multiply by 4. I know everybody's positive in quadrant 1, so I don't have to worry about absolute values happening here. So I use the symmetry, and I kept it in quadrant 1, so I can just erase absolute values. So there's our asteroid, and all we did was take the single curve in quadrant one and just quadruple it. So just to warn you, I'm going to skip more and more algebra steps as we go, because there's so many other things that we need to work on that I'm going to do some more skipping algebra steps. It won't get much worse than the, what I skipped right here. I just won't explain so much next time. <laughs> you can, of course, ask questions, and I may answer them. All right, what do we do right after uh, arc length? Surface area. So that was right afterwards. Surface area is basically arc length multiplied by how far out or your radius right there. So let's write down the service area that you had before, which I don't have in my notes. Oh, look at this cheat sheet. It's amazing. No. Where's our service area? That is actually one of the best cheat sheets I've seen. Yeah, it's solid. All right, it's service solid. area. <laughs> yeah, I recommend with your cheat sheet either uh, one really good thing is keep it on some really high quality paper. It looks like one student has access to really high quality paper here. You don't have to necessarily wrap it up in some plastic, but it's reasonable. Um, but if you're going to be erasing, you want to make sure your paper is solid. You can cut up a manila folder is a good way to, you can probably erase 50 times on a manila folder and not have issues. All right, oh, other side. All right, service area. And again, I'm not going to solve all these integrals. How would you go about solving this integral here if I told you to do so? How would you integrate this? Cheat sheet won't help you. U sub. There we go. What's a good U sub? Cosine's good, sine's good, doesn't matter. So du is cos t dt. Oh, look at that. Easy. So I'd insult your intelligence if I did this integral right here. So you should be able to at least see how to do these integrals. I think WebWork makes you actually integrate them, so you will be integrating them on your homeworks. But you should at least 
convince yourself you know the technique to solve it, even if I don't actually ask you to solve it. All right, so service area used to be integral a to b. I think I used sa for service area. 2 pi f of x square root 1 plus f prime x squared dx. There is some fine print with this setup right here. So this is service area of revolving a curve. So that's left out of the cheat sheet. But where, what are we revolving around if, if this is what it looks like? So this is an x-axis revolution. You're going to revolve around the, uh, the function f of x around the x-axis from a to b. Now, it was slightly different if you had a function of y about the y-axis. So it was slightly different if you had a function of y about the y-axis. So we'll just look at the, the regular one first. So f of x is y, square root. <clears throat> this 1 plus, we already reduced the, or not reduced, but we already turned what is inside this box into parametrics. So we did this hard work. I'm not going to redo all that work. So let's just look back up and see where that came from. Arc length. Here we go. So I think everything here is equal, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, everything here is equal. So what we have is this. What we're going to re replace it with is this one here. I think those are probably the best. Well, we have what's at the upper left. And the best one to choose is what's at the lower right. So let's go make this substitution here. Nope, I just had that thought too. Well, that this will not be treated like a u sub. So, this is what we call identity substitution. Not we're not changing variable. So this is an identity substitution, kind of like uh, swapping out sine squared for one minus cos squared. So it's not we're not really changing the variable. So let's try to remember that on the bottom right. So it's x prime squared plus y prime squared dt. So that was the change we made. Pretty much everything else stays the same. 2 pi is 2 pi. Now I'm going to use the letters a and b again. However, they're different than the originals. What variable are, are these a and b's going to be in? These are going to be t values. So you figure out what x, which two x values you start and end at, and you have to figure out the t values. Very similar to what we did, I think, in the first problem, where we had an x-coordinate, and we had to figure out what t-value did we hit that x-coordinate. In this case, you'll have two x-coordinates. you got to figure out what two t-values get you there. Here's our service area. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to put this in a box. The fine prints over on the right side. This is revolving a, a curve about the x-axis. What do you think would change if we revolved about the y-axis? Change the y to an x. That's the only thing that I would use the word, uh, the only thing that's not symmetric. So everything else, they behave the same. The only time a y appears and x 
X is not there is that one spot. So this Y right here, that's the only thing that's gonna change out. So the other version, A to B, two pi X square root, There's our two surface areas, and we will do one problem with surface area, and we'll do that uh, tomorrow. No problem.